episode brought to you by thegiveawaygeek.com. Win board games, electronics, and gift cards at thegiveawaygeek.com. The geek that keeps on giving. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we've got another top three and three. This is where we cover any top three in three minutes or less. Today we've got the most played games in July. Uh, just to give you a quick idea, I had 42 plays of 19 different games in July. Spent roughly 35 total hours playing board games, so that's pretty a pretty good month. That's a pretty good month there if you ask me. So without anything else, let's get right into the list. And number three for me was Splendor. Got four plays of Splendor this month. This is one that has been a recurring game on these lists. Uh, it's my wife's current favorite game, I think. I think I don't think there's any game that tops it right now. Um, it's the one she repeatedly asked to play. We only played it four times this month, uh, but really with as many games as uh, we've got to choose from, that's a, that's a pretty good amount, to be perfectly honest. Uh, if, if you haven't checked out Splendor yet, it's a real fun, really quick. I think we're down to about 20 minutes a game is about what we play. Um, really quick game of just kind of building this small engine to work your way up to 15 prestige points. Try to get nobles to come and visit uh, to give you more prestige points. First one to 15 wins. Check it out if you haven't yet. My number two is Mice and Mystics. This one recently came back kind of into my gaming view. I got six plays of Mice and Mystics in in July. I am working through the campaign, doing a solo campaign. I've never, you know, we've started a bunch of campaigns and, and they just never seem to go anywhere. You know, we get distracted, we'll play a couple of games, we get distracted. So I'm working my way through it. I plan on completing the campaign. Uh, I want to keep getting some more games and it's been a couple weeks since my last game, but I will continue working on that. This is a, a fun little dungeon crawl, really. It's fully cooperative. Uh, the the bad guys are controlled by you know they're they're programmed basically. They have their you know AI or whatever you want to call it, and. Uh, you're going through, you're trying to save the king, you've been transformed into mice, and you're fighting rats and caterpillars and spiders. It's from Plat Hat Games, designed by Jerry Hawthorne. Hawthorne. If you have not checked this game out, it's another one that definitely, if you like co-ops, if you like dungeon crawls, um, and it's got a, this massive storybook that doubles as the campaign guide. So, you know, it's really good for little kids as well. Uh, some of the rules you might want to scale back just a little bit for little kids, but, you know, if you go into it just having fun with them, but then it's got a, a pretty good amount of depth and decision-making for uh, adults as well. And finally, my number one is a brand new one to this list, brand new one to me, Tavarua, which is the surfing game from Far Off Games designed by Cody Miller. This one is basically you're trying to uh, catch the best waves, score the best points, and at the end of the game, see who the grand champion of the surf contest is. It has a balance mechanism where you know you, you do different tricks to earn more points, but the better the trick, the more it affects your balance. And then you've got to counter that against how the upcoming how, how the wave and the and the current is going to affect your balance. And uh, a lot of fun. Uh, it plays up to six players, and the gameplay is primarily simultaneous, so it really doesn't slow down a whole lot with more players. So there you have it. That's my top three in three minutes. I hope you enjoy this list. If there's anything that uh, surprised you or you thought should have been on the list that wasn't, please leave that in the comments section below. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.